Hey guys, Anthony here in St. Petersburg, Russia. I have gone halfway around the world and I've done it to see the Imagine Cup 2013 finals. Now the Imagine Cup is this worldwide young inventors competition. So we have students from 71 different countries here in St. Petersburg. They've all created apps, they've created software, they've created gadgets, they've created games that are going to change the world for the better. And they're all competing for about a million dollars worth of prizes. Now over the next couple days, here and on the D News channel, we're gonna be showing you some of the best stuff from the floor. But first, we wanted to find out just a little bit more about what the Imagine Cup is. It's kind of like the Olympics for hackers. This is the 11th year of Imagine Cup. Um, every year it takes place somewhere different in the world. It's been in Sydney, Australia, it's been in Cairo, it's been in Brazil, all over the place over the years. Um, and this year we've got uh, 87 teams of students from 71 countries who've come here together with their projects they've created. Um, and they're competing for a million dollars in prizes. We're seeing some things this year, like the team from Kenya created a, a centralized inventory for all the children's homes in yes. Kenya. And then you've got uh, the team from Belgium who created a firefighting uniform with built-in sensors and navigation and stuff like that. Where do you see games sort of fitting into the larger theme of the Imagine Cup kind of this year and, mm -hmm. and going forward? Because, I mean, game, you know, we all love games and games are wonderful, but it's like, you're looking at this firefighter's uniform, and then you're looking at games, and you're like, well, how can how do they exist in the same competition? Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, the key, of course, is that, I mean, they are sort of in their own contest within mm -hmm. the overall stuff. But, I mean, a big part of a Magic Cup is not just the projects and, and sort of what they can accomplish, but it's about the students themselves and where they're going to go in their lives. And Imagine Cup is giving them the chance to um, really push themselves and actually ship a product, you know, like make something for real and try to get it out there and succeed in the world. Um, and any, any kind of project they put together and make is going to have a profound impact on the rest of their lives, on, the, on their skill level, their comfort level, their ability to you know, pitch their belief and their vision to, in, to investors or backers or partners. Um, and so, and, and honestly, games is an area that students have an enormous passion for. I mean, they play games, they make games. It's, a, it's the reason why a lot of people get in the program in the first place. Yeah. And so, to you know, to close that door would just would would cut out vast numbers of students who wouldn't have the chance to really pursue their dreams this way. Something that really impressed me: uh, the team from Angola created uh, a video game based on a board game that they play mm -hmm. in their country. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, you you can sort of see, I guess what you just said reflected in the fact that the Angolan team was able to make a video game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, this is the first time that Angola has ever been at a Magic Cup. And the fact that it's a games team is fantastic. I mean, you know, obviously Africa has not had a, a large game development community. Like it really hasn't spread off there. But they play games all the time. They play games of their own making and so on. And so the Angolan team created a very traditional kind of Angolan kids game that they, play, they played growing up, like in the street and so forth or in their homes. And they were able to go ahead and realize it in software and bring it here to Magic Cup. And it's fantastic. You know, we get, all, we get teams from all over the world this way. So Seed is a mix of a platformer and a runner game. So basically the character uh, bounces uh, from left to right. And you have to help it go through levels uh, by putting either a jelly or a grapnel. So you just uh, swipe your finger on the screen. It's very simple and intuitive. And uh, we have uh, this this good flow in the in the levels. So depending on the numbers on their stomachs, you have to get them like you have to blow up boxes or cut ropes and get them to land in the right place to solve this equation. Because uh, we think that we want to create the games that not only that not only make people fun, but also can give positive value to the players, to the world. Yes. It's a 2D puzzle platformer. And the main characters are light. Uh, in the light, get new, new worlds get revealed. And as soon as you see them, they're real. So that means if you see a platform, you can step on it. And you turn off the light, you just fall through it. So let's talk about how a, how a team from a, a Sri Lanka or something like that finds out about the Imagine Cup mm -hmm. and enters and, and makes it here to St. Petersburg. Yeah, absolutely. So every year, um, Microsoft subsidiaries around the world, which are in you know 80 plus countries or whatever, um, they organize their own sort of national finals for Imagine Cup. And so you know China has one, you know Thailand has one, Kenya has one. It's all over the world. 
and um, students in those countries compete to uh, determine the one team that's going to go from that country to the world finals that we host this year in St. Petersburg. When they get here with their project, um, they have two days of competition that go on. The first day is a live presentation day. They get up, they've got their slides, they've got videos, they yeah. have a hardware demo, whatever they're going to show off, and there's a panel of judges sitting at a table with microphones, and they watch the presentation and ask questions and so forth. And see, it's a very formal presentation process. And the teams rehearse like crazy, because I mean, almost all of them, English is not their first language. And so they practice like crazy. They've got to get the presentation down to 10 minutes. They're very, very tight, very careful, very meticulous. But that's this first day. The okay. second day is the hands-on judging. And that's when they come to the showcase, where we are right now. And it's kind of like a trade show, like E3 or something, you know, or CES. And every team has their own booth, they have their own monitor, computers, their equipment, and then the judges come around, one judge per team in kind of a round-robin format, and the judge spends 15 minutes hands-on with the project, trying out the, the software, talking to the team, seeing where they came from, asking about their business model, their inspiration, where they're going next, etc. And that hands-on judging, of course, it happens one judge at a time, and so a team is going to be presenting you know, in that, in that format several times over the course of the day to get through all the judges. Yeah. So it's very intense. It's very intense. It's very you know, direct and conversational, and it's, it's very challenging for them. It's, it's so cool because it really is taking them through the process of you know, pitching a project to almost investors when they're in that judging format. Exactly. And then being on a trade show floor. And yeah, it, it's kind of interesting yeah. to watch them kind of acclimate to that throughout yeah. the day and get comfortable because you can tell that some of them have just never been in any environment like oh, yeah. this before. Yeah, no, it's, it's brand new for a lot of them. And that's the thing. I mean, the skills they develop here in the course of the presentations and the hands-on judging are going to serve them really, really well, whatever they do next in their life. So if they, uh, if they win their track or if they win the competition, what, what are some of the prizes that are so our, uh, our three main competitions of innovation, games, and world citizenship, um, we have three winning teams in each category. And they win cash prizes of uh, $50,000, $10,000, and $5,000. And they're going to go home with a big cardboard check and, you know, the whole thing, trophies and whatnot, which will be, you know, super exciting for them and a really big deal. Without further ado, let's get started with the games competition. Please welcome the creator of Tetris, Alexei Pajitov! Hi, buddy. Good to meet you, man. Good to meet you. Third place in games competition is to Banzai Lightning. Friends! Oh. oh, you have extra money, guys. And the second award goes to Salite Studio, Indonesia, guys! Finally, the Oscar goes to <laughs> Zeppelin Studio, Austria. What is the next step for you guys? You have like visibility now, you have a little bit more cash now. Where do you go from here? We continue. <laughs> That's the way. Now, we got like, we talk to people, we got contacts now. We can move on, get to Steam, get to the platforms, and just get out there to the real great market, the real world. You gotta finish the game too, right? Yeah. 
and now we have the resources for that. Yeah. So does this guy kind of just make you go like, oh, now we have room to finish this thing? Yes, it does. It really does. You are really relaxed now. You can pay for your flat and you can eat again. Well, you guys, congratulations. Super awesome. Thank you very much. Cannot wait to see the finished game. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, such, a, such an astounding and just inspiring week in St. Petersburg to see the, the innovation, the stuff that these kids from around the world came up with and to, and to see them just kind of be rewarded for the amazing things that they're doing for the world. We have so many interviews and individual segments. If you want to see all of these games and all of these inventions that these kids came up with, we are going to have them here on Rev3 Games and also over on my other channel on DNews, youtube.com slash DNews. So subscribe to both to get all of the amazing stuff from the Imagine Cup. <laughs>